Yeki Zhao from Oregon State. I'm in the food science department. I first joined OSCI in 1996, I left to the East Coast for a few years, came back in 2001. So I started to work when all those berries are harvested. So I've been team uh, together with Chad and Bernadine all in the all last 15 years. We've been working together. Soon they harvest the fruits come to my lab. So I'm working on both uh, post harvest uh, storage technology for extending shelf life, issue for safety. Also, in fact, uh, most efforts is putting um, develop more value added product, include uh, freezing, drying, or you name it. So anyway, for this afternoon, I have 30 minutes. Trying to talk about the, uh, it's difficult to learn. <laughs> there's yeah. also, um, there's actually a mic if you want. It's okay, can you hear me okay? Yeah. Okay, perfect. So in that case, I don't hear this. So I'm um, trying to talk about the post the harvest handling of strawberries for fresh market. So this is the story needs to tell. I understand that this, you will know why it's important to develop a proper handling procedures. So uh, strawberries. Even after they harvest, they are not dead. They are still living materials. When I'm saying living, the biggest thing is uh, respiration. So the consequences for respiration is absorb oxygen, <coughs> generator of CO2, and also release energy plus release water. So all this are impacted by temperature, relative humidity, and gas atmospheres. That's why I later I mentioned a little bit about modified atmosphere packaging give you the ideas of why it is important, what you can do for extending shelf life. Also, microbial. That's from both quality and a safety standpoint. Fungi, especially the gray molds, it's a really major uh, issue for cause quality deterioration. Uh, talk about uh, food safety issues, all these different pathogens, they love berries because of sugar. And also this uh, atmosphere storage, Let's, depending on the gas composition, significantly impact the respiration rate. Plus the physical angel. If any berries uh, have a physical angel, it really speeds up all this respiration and the microbial growth. So because of this, when we develop a post-harvest handling procedures or technologies, we need to count on all these factors. So I believe you all are aware of them, these uh, fungi issues. They are one of the major issues leading to quality deterioration, shortening the shelf life. The worst part is, when happens, it impacts all surrounding fruits. So if you look at the factors affecting post-harvest shelf life of strawberries, I need to uh, make it clear. When you talk about the shelf life, it's really many factors affected especially the variety of the berries also are a significant uh, factor. So of course, harvest system, that's important for um, retaining the physical integrity, preventing any physical injury, and also a packing type of the packing technology, type of the packaging containers, uh, rate of the coating. So I will emphasize a lot on this cold chain, why it is important, what you can do. And then the storage temperature, don't forget the relative humidity because berry fruits, especially fresh ones, they have 85% water. So water loss, it's a big thing. During the storage, the relative humidity directly impact transmission and the respiration. And um, also uh, the temperature during transportation and the display, I will touch this a little bit. Also, I want to talk a little bit about other potential post-harvest technologies for extending shelf life. So I mentioned uh, MAP a little bit, also uh, talk about uh, potential application using edible coating for extending shelf life. So again, temperature is the key, as mentioned, because temperature directly impact respiration rate and water loss. Again, water loss, there's two causes, one is respiration, another is called transmission. That's because if the relatively humidity is too lower due to the relative hum uh, humidity difference between the fluids and the environmental, it gets water loss. That's why maintaining high or relative humidity during uh, fresh storage is important. Also, a decay development, many factors could cause the decay, and how you're going to uh, delay the decay is the key. 
um, again, exposed to warm temperature at any handling step of the harvest could reduce fresh food shelf life. Uh, again, cooling is a key. By doing a uh, probably cooling, what you can do is you can remove the field heat. That's uh, what I trying to mention this uh, cold chair. The cooling should start right after fruits harvest. Because again, at the warm temperature, accelerated uh, respiration rate. Uh, the, I will show you the pictures. You can see the difference. Uh, also, uh, <coughs> by reducing the respiration, uh, reducing water loss, also uh, decrease sensitivity to ethylenes. So this is just a, a big statement. Even after picking, uh, strawberry remains alive and produce heat as a natural consequence of respiration. Give you examples see how the temperature impacts. If you store at uh, 1 degree C or 32 Fahrenheit, a ton of strawberry produces approximately 3,100 BTU per day. But if moved to room temperature, that's 41,000 BTU. You can see that's a huge difference. So this curve gives you an idea how this fungi decay happens depending on the storage temperature. This is the time, and this is three different temperatures. One is uh, 0 degrees C, 5 degrees C, and uh, 20, uh, 10 degrees C. You can see how quickly this decay happens depending on the storage temperature. Like all these things, majority of them just like a warm temperature. Um, so what means maintain a cold chain? Maintain a cold chain means you want to cool them as quick as possible. So for when picking in the field, trying to uh, make several small trips to the cooler instead of wait for too long in a warm uh, temperature. Then um, keep the product cool in the field. So when picking, you can use a shade and a mixed system when the uh, relative humidity is lower to prevent <coughs> transmission. And also pay attention to airflow how you're stacking them together and the box bending. Also load into the refrigerator trans, uh, transit as quick as possible if you transport your fruits from one location to another. Unload into the refrigerated storage quickly after uh, move to another lo uh, newer location. Also during a uh, retail display, try to keep uh, cold temperature. Not only that, you need to keep monitoring and uh, measuring the temperature at each step, at each uh, point by using a temperature record. So uh, when looking for cold storage methods, there are different ways. One is the uh, mechanical refrigeration, mainly named forced air cooling or room cooling. That's one most popularly used. Or you can use an evaporative cooling. That's much quicker and more efficient, but the, the unit is much more complicated than forced air. Or you can use hydro cooling, or, or ice cooling, or vacuum cooling. These two are not practical for fresh strawberries, but has been used for other fresh produce, especially hydro cooling for cherry has been used quite successful. Ice cooling most for vegetables. So really come to fresh strawberries, you have very limited choices. So for uh, when storage in a walking cooler, there are a couple of things just want to uh, point it again. A uh, set point should be between uh, 32 to 36 Fahrenheit. What that means is you want to keep strawberry as close as to 0 to 2 degrees Celsius as possible for extending shelf life. Uh, also, again, retaining higher relative humidity, 90 to 95 percent, to prevent transmission, to uh, retain, basically retaining the water in the strawberries. Um, also, you want to uh, map in the uh, temperatures throughout the room and store product at the best temperature available. So I will show you the pictures. Don't believe you have a cold storage room. All the points, temperature are the same, which is not true. So you want to make sure you retain a uniform temperature in the cold room and avoiding some um, spots to prevent warm or overcooling. So these are the spots you want to pay attention. By the door, it's warm, trying to avoid that place. 
Also, in the back, it's cool. You also want to avoid in that spot because you don't want to freeze your uh, fruits. And also, again, here, yes, should be stored as close as to 34 Fahrenheit as possible and also away from high air velocity. This reason is, again, preventing water loss. So a few other things about uh, storage in walking cooler. Uh, using air curtains in doorway and uh, maintain in good conditions. Uh, again, just uh, preventing warm air getting into a, your uh, cool room. Also keep door closed when not um, ending uh, uh, existing the door uh, cooler. Just trying to, again, maintain the cold temperature. Also upgrade or calibrate or warm temperature away from the door. Make sure you get your uh, correct reading in the uh, temperature in the room. Uh, if possible, <coughs> minimize your storage time. So uh, this are uh, uh, just uh, a few pictures give you the ideas. This is the door with the curtains, and this is the area nearby the door, so it can be the warm spot you want to avoid. It. And these are the other areas you can see. This is a fan. Again, this is uh, when I used to, um, my first job, in fact, it's an engineer for a design refrigerator. So we did a lot of this, uh, you know, monitoring works, trying to make sure the uniform air circulation in the cooler. Again, depending on the size of the cold room, depending on how the uh, fans goes, the air uniformity may change significantly. So those are the two spots. The temperature could be very, very different. So make sure when you have this uh, thermal cup, in your cool room, you have different spots, you get a more uniform reading, so you put your product in more uniform uh, cold areas. Um, next one is just in the, uh, when you display your product, also want to uh, make, sh make, sure, I mean, uh, make sure they are in the cold uh, temperature. So temperature may manage can be a challenge in a display, okay? So again, a balance between a display designed to uh, increase sales and needs to maintain lower temperature. I'll show you a couple of pictures of what this means. You want to the display looks good, but at the same time, you also want to make sure your product stored in the cold temperature. Sometimes it can be challenged, so you need to have a good balance on that. And uh, again, rotation is the key. Uh, times uh, on the retail sales, product goes and ins, Retail is the key, so especially for non-refrigerated display, you want to check every two hours. So, uh, for example, this is a beautiful display, you know, really uh, stimulating the sales. And um, here, this is the refrigerated display. So, I'll show you another picture. Uh, in fact, I just want to uh, say a few more words about this uh, refrigerated display. There are different types. You can contact the supply to uh, based on your needs. To uh, they have different design that means is hot air, cold air circulated. Okay, so you want to talk to the supply to meet your needs. So um, you want to again for the retail display to maintain a lower temperature as close as to 36 to 38. Uh, don't allow foods to warm during stock. Again, as close as to 32, it's the ideal situation. Make sure the air supply is uh, uniform, distributed, and also the temperature, the thermal cup is calibrated. Um, also, don't uh, obscure airflow in this plane. Again, overstocking can cause the problem. Uh, broke the air vent can be a problem. So again, that, that the design, that the uh, display, it, it's the key. So this is another type of this company, HS, HSC. They are making this uh, produce display depending on the uh, needs. Again, air can be circulated in different ways depending on your needs. You can talk to the uh, manufacturers. Um, this is another one. This is uh, called refrigerated all China beans. Also have a cooling systems here. The design is a little bit different from previous pictures. Um, okay, during the transportation, 
again, the truck has to be refrigerated. You can either use box the truck or truck the trailers, depending on the amount of the produce, to, uh, the fruits you are uh, going to transport from one location to another. Um, temperature recording and the monitoring during transportation is the key. Another thing is, uh, show the pictures here, you can use it called thermal uh, basket. Thermal basket is basically, it can overwrap the stock of carton <coughs> on the pallets with a foil laminate the thermal blanket. Based on the manufacturer, you can use, by using the thermal uh, uh, blanket, you can maintain the temperature of 3 degrees C within a carton for up to 36 hours. It's really help to retain the lower temperature. Um, so, I don't know how many of you know this uh, USDA porter cooler. Uh, this is the um, uh, cooler <coughs> developed by a USDA research team. So, they have different volumes, uh, 35 to 7 uh, cubic meters inside the space. Um, they are using a cold air is forced through the produce by uh, pressure from a fan in a second wall inside. So um, again, if you want to see more details, I give the website. You can go to the website to see the uh, hot the cooler. Usually the price is about $1,200. This price is not included a trailer, but the uh, cooling system. So I have a picture to show one of the units. So basically it's a cooling system, the trailer, and the, they have the, the units have different size, can fit the space, different space needs. Um, I saw these two uh, websites, uh, you know, if you're interested to learn more about the cooling system, these two websites give uh, very good information. One is, I believe, by the North Carolina State University Extension. Also, this is from the uh, USA, a very detailed information for the cold chain, from cooling after picking to uh, in the retail display. So uh, the, my rest of the time, I want to talk about other uh, potential technology to further extend the shelf life for fresh strawberries. So um, I will talk about the modified atmosphere storage or packaging, and also talk a little bit about the edible coating. So what is MAP? Um, in the air, you have 20% oxygen, 0.03% uh, CO2 plus nitrogen, right? So what happens is, with such a high oxygen, it's encourage uh, respiration, it's uh, encourage majority of microbial growth. So by using modified atmosphere means, you're going to replace air, you're going to use a pre-mixed gas composition, usually has elevated CO2, reduced oxygen, then balanced with nitrogen. Nitrogen is an inert gas. By doing that, you can extend the shelf life. Back to strawberry, generally speaking, by reduced oxygen, you can slow down the respiration. You don't want to fully stop it. You want to slow down res respiration. And the carbon dioxide not only create an aerobic condition, but also carbon dioxide is a natural antimicrobial agent. So this technology, you can, in fact, it's used in many different products today. If you go to like uh, Winkles, you will see some ground pork, ground turkey are packaging it using this kind of technology. Many fresh pasta are packaging it using this kind of technology. The key is, depending on the product, different gas composition are required. So, back to uh, fresh strawberries. Generally believe by using 15 to 20% CO2, it can significantly control the growth of the tritis. So that's the initial idea. So show you uh, some more detailed information. So by using high CO2, can, uh, so how the CO2, high CO2 can be obtained. There are different ways to obtain high CO2. So but remember this, you know, it, it's always a juggling here. When you packaging fresh berries in a closed container, remember respiration, absorb oxygen, generate CO2, right? So you can use in that nature to generate high CO2. But depending when more, less, more oxygen absorbed it, then respiration slows down. So 
it reached some saturation. And also another thing is the packaging film, the pack, the uh, permeability of the packaging film is the key. It has all worked together to achieve that balance to get the best results. So high CO2 atmospheres can be obtained using impermeable plastic bag. That means if the packaging film is not permeable to CO2, when fruits respire, it generates CO2. That CO2 can accumulate it by reach 15 to 20 percent the level. In that case, can stop control the growth of the tritus. Okay, that's one way to do. Uh, so another way is uh, strawberry cartons needs to maintain sealed during entire two, or two to three days to obtain this high CO2 benefit. So um, I show you the picture later that uh, Trisco's has been working with a packaging company to develop a system to achieve this goals. Okay, so based on this, they say uh, the at the one degree C, the shelf life can be extended to 10 to 14 days. Um, this is the ideal gas composition. Again, this depending on the variety of the fruits. Just want to make one more comment. When you using MAP has to work together with refrigerated storage. So don't think MAP can replace room storage, no way. So modified answer packaging has to work with refrigeration storage together. So uh, this is the uh, Drisco system right now they are using for transporting of uh, fresh strawberries. Uh, you know, I give the website, they have a nice uh, video in YouTube. So to kind of uh, explain how the system works, basically this is a pallet. It's all overwrapped by the uh, packaging plastic films. So they are very low permeability. In that case, accumulated CO2. So can generate high CO2 to prevent the growth of uh, botrytis. Um, however, lately there's some uh, different opinions says when why higher CO2 is good to preventing the uh, botrytis but it may cause reduce of the pH of the fruits, which impact the flavor, cause fizzy or sharp taste of the fruits. So more research being done say, why don't we use elevated CO2? So in this case, it should be some kind of results. So this is the uh, work being done, say using, I give all the references here. So using 80% oxygen, with not CO2, just to generate CO2 by the fruits itself, because with this high CO2 oxygen, can rapid respiration is very fast. It can release more carbon dioxide. In that case, you can see this. I believe this is 60 days even. Uh, this is of course you know what happens uh, with this uh, MAP technology. Fruits look so fresh. Oh, okay, oh, five minutes, I need to speed up. Okay, so anyway, I'm not going to uh, do this too much here, so this gives you some uh, results. Basically, you know, showing all the positive results on the weight loss and the fruit firmness. So, in addition to this, I just want to quickly point it, in addition to MAP, there are other research being done for um, extending shelf life. What is heat? It's very interesting. They say the 50 degree very short for fresh, Strawberries significant that extend shelf life, and also uh, uh, another way is using called biocontrol, just using another fungi to inoculate it. They can become competitors with the tritis can uh, prevent the growth. So uh, I don't know how many of you pay attention on this new technology. It's a commercial technology called it's fresh. Basically, it's using a strip um, with uh, clay and other minerals to absorb ethylene. That's help extending the shelf life. Uh, so last thing I'll talk a little bit is the edible coating. Um, I've been doing this uh, many, many years for edible coating. In fact, I worked with Oregon Strawberry Commission 10 years ago for this technology. <coughs> edible coating is not new. You know, if you buy uh, citric fruits, you buy apples, <coughs> many of them are edible coated. Most product is uh, wax coating or these days using vegetable-based coating. The coating is called, it's called a skin packaging, basically it provides barrier to gas and water. But, but all those coatings, unfortunately, they don't have anti-fungi or anti-microbial functionality. What we've been doing in my lab, we use a material called Kyvacin. You can see Kyvacin, um, I don't know how many of you, I don't have time, I guess. 
Kytosin is a natural polymorph. It's extracted from shrimp or crab shells. FDA has allowed it has allowed it using as a dietary supplement for binding with body cholesterol for weight control. But this is also a beautiful material can make films just like a serine films. So the beautiful thing is has a very strong anti-fungal function. So you can see coding strawberries um, significantly control the decay. And we did all the consumer tests that was very well received, unfortunately. By today, Kydesen, it's not approved by FDA for food application, although it's allowed it as a dietary supplement. Okay, so one last thing I just want to remind everyone. In fact, in 1986, FDA approved to using a lower dosage food irradiation to control the fungi in strawberries. Of course, no market because of consumers' concern for irradiation. Okay, so last slide. So just the basic uh, harvest, uh, post-harvest principles. Of course, you want to harvest at correct maturity, uh, reduce the physical handling and the damage, also protect the product from sun and cool as quick as you can. Also, uh, keep packing line or area simple clean, issue good working hygiene, uh, retain cold chain from harvest to retail to the consumers, and a high relatively humidity. Uh, Possible using advanced post-harvest technology to further extend your shelf life. Of course, train and compensate your work adequately. Thank you. Yeah, I have a, a list of references. You know, if anyone wants to read. Anybody have any questions? Yeah, I'm just curious. Thinking about the cooling um, with fresh strawberries, do you have any idea, like ballpark, what the cost of just putting in some sort of small system would be? Or would you go to the references that you would Yeah, like I said, if you buy this uh, USDA small, that, that's intended for the small scale growers. I think that's a unit 1200, but not include the trailer, it's just the units. Otherwise, it's really difficult to say because depending on which kind of cooling, I still believe forced the air. That's the one for strawberries, most practical, although there are other technologies. But because the nature of the berry fruits, they have limited applications. I don't have the numbers. Yeah, no. <coughs> okay. I think it'll be good to have the, um, the details of the links that you had listed mm -hmm. about the different cooling options mm -hmm. um, given out to you guys, whether it be in a bulletin or um, just in the meeting proceedings. So we'll be sure to have make sure that you guys have access to that information. Thank you. Okay. Thanks.